Uh, so this video will be showing you how to uh, put together a, the deck railing with the uh, black half inch uh, balusters. And I'll just walk you through step by step. Uh, it's a really good look. Uh, and I'll show you here what we got in just a minute. And then I'll walk you through uh, what you need to buy to put it together and uh, and then walk you through the steps for for uh, putting it together and making it look right all right and here is uh, the railing we're talking about here you can see it's uh, pressure treated lumber four by four posts and two by fours for the uh, railing and then the black balusters uh, there in the middle and you, I'm gonna extend these the two sections I'm putting together will go in these two spots and uh, finish up the look here so there's a some columns I did as well and uh, so I'll be walking you through how to build these all right here we go all right and here's the products we'll be using uh, these are from uh, Home Depot this is the precision brand uh, precision built products and this particular one is the 10 pack of black pearl mat and these particular ones, they typically come in two sizes. Uh, for my deck, I went with the 26 inch and the top of my rail is about 36 inches off the ground. So if that's what you want, go with the 26. If you want a little higher railing, I think they make a 32 inch um, on that. And then for each section of railing, um, you'll need two railing connector kits. I don't know why they sell them in, in sets of two because you need uh, four of these for each section. And then for your balusters, you'll need um, however many of these kits you need based on your length. Uh, so this will do, it's 20 connectors, this will do 10 uh, balusters. So there's one piece for the top, one for the bottom. And uh, this kit also works for stairs, uh, but today I'm just gonna be showing you how to do the straight, uh, the straight railing. Um, basically there's 20 connectors for straight railing and 20 connectors for stairs in this kit. So, um, but there's only only 20 screws. So um, basically you'll have uh, plastic pieces left over when you get done, regardless of which way you go. All right, and here's the tools we're gonna use today. Um, saw for cutting the two by fours. Um, you'll need a drill for putting in the uh, baluster connectors and the railing connectors. And also very important, you need the, uh, you need the star bit uh, for these. And on the package, uh, it doesn't really say that you need them, but you do need the, the star bit. I'm not sure the exact size of that, but anyway, just be aware of that. So when you're buying your stuff, uh, make sure you pick up a star bit. Um, unlike some other products I've bought in the past, uh, this one does not include one in the package for you. Uh, but anyway, um, you'll need a hammer. We we'll use that when we're setting the baluster connectors. Uh, utility knife, primarily just for getting the packages of the baluster connector and railing connector packages open. Um, I use the uh, speed square for uh, cutting with my saw. If you've got a miter saw, then uh, you, won't, you, you won't really need the speed square. Uh, and then I use a smaller square for laying out the locations for the baluster connectors, uh, pencil. Then I've just got a scrap block of wood here. We'll use those to uh, tap the balusters in just so we don't damage the end of them. And then I've got a soft hammer uh, for tapping the top rail and the bottom rail into the balusters, again, so I don't damage the rails. And then one, uh, you know, thing that I learned, and this works out really good, is if you, if you can get you a spacer that's about three eighths of an inch thick, uh, we'll use that when we're trying to get the balusters lined up. It can be really tricky, but I'll show you the technique I've developed by doing a lot of these. It uh, hopefully will save you some time and frustration. So one other quick tip, if you're doing a big deck like I did, um, you may find it's cheaper to buy this uh, contractor pack. And basically, it's got five boxes of what I showed you before, and you get a, a price break on that. So, um, like I said, if you're doing a big deck, do the math and see if you won't come out cheaper um, buying this uh, contractor pack. 
this was actually had more than I needed, but uh, it was still cheaper than buying the individuals. And so it worked out. Uh, I've got some extras in case, you know, get a bad one or if I mess up and, uh, and bend or chip or whatever one. Uh, you shouldn't have any problem with that uh, there uh, unless you just are careless. But, you know, normal working, uh, these, these go in pretty, pretty easily. There's no, uh, no risk of scuffing them up. All right, and this is what we'll be building in today's video. You should already have your 4x4 post in place on your deck and measured the distance between them. And then we'll put this piece together. And then these handy connectors here uh, and the uh, baluster connectors, which are down here. You can barely see them at the bottom of the post. Um, that's what we'll be putting together in this video. And so let's get to it. All right. So for the first step, we need to get our measurement between our two posts. And normally you just measure between your two four by fours. But uh, over here, I've got a little special case. I'm basically got a column under my porch. And uh, so I need to measure between the four by four. And on the bottom, it's going up to this, kick, this uh, bottom trim. And so I measured up <clears throat> to where the top would be mounting and I put a little a uh, piece of three quarter uh, filler to bring it out to the same distance as the bottom. So we're gonna be measuring between here and here. Okay, so first tip is measure at the bottom. Uh, so hopefully your posts and everything are level, but as we all know in the real world, nothing's actually straight and level. Uh, so measure at the bottom and then you can work the top. You got a lot more leverage and a lot more play to move that in or out um, just a little bit. So measuring from the bottom of the four by four to the edge of my thing here, it's basically 65 and seven sixteenths. And uh, go ahead and get it uh, down to the sixteenth and uh, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now wait, <clears throat> before you go and cut that measurement, let's uh, take a minute and read this railing connector box instructions. And you have to allow for the width of these things. So step one, measure distance between two posts and subtract half an inch. So make sure you do that. So the good news is if you forget about it, uh, you know, you can still cut off another half inch. Now, it's not half inch per side, it's half inch total. So I've already cut my boards to, um, so we had 65 and 7 sixteenths. Uh, take a half inch off of that and I'm just a sixteenth under 65 inches or 64 and 15 sixteenths. Okay, now it's time to <clears throat> put our baluster connectors in and take a minute to think about uh, your railings. So the bottom railing is gonna be pretty visible. Uh, so you wanna make sure you get your prettiest side for that. So I picked this side for the bottom, it's got a little knot here, but other than that, it's a uh, it's pretty clear uh, board. The top one's not going to be quite as visible, uh, just because it's going to have a couple boards on top of it for your top railing. Uh, so if you got one that's a little less desirable, um, put that one on the on the top. And then also think about you know which side of the board will be visible. Um, if you got one side of the deck that you want to you know you're going to be seeing more. You know, pick that side here, and just remember when we get done with this, we're gonna we're gonna flip it up. We're gonna flip it up, and it'll sit on top. So uh, your your pretty side will be on the outsides, basically. Or another way to say that is the outsides of these boards will both end up being on the same side. So you want this side and this side, uh, the pretty sides where you want to see them the most, and then. Um, Put the one that's the prettiest of those two on the bottom. All right, so basically now I've put them in my vise uh, and they're flush on the ends. So we'll go and when we mark our baluster connector locations, we'll mark them both at the same time. All right, next it's time to mark out where our baluster connectors will go. The first step is to measure and find the halfway point. So this one is... 63 and 5 sixteenths, so 31 and a half, roughly. So what I do is, I don't try and get the exact measurement. What I do is 31 and a half is pretty close. So 
So I'll make a mark there. And then I'll do 31 and a half from the other side. And then I can easily see one, two, three, four, five sixteenths. So one, two, three, three sixteenths should be about the middle, or you can just kind of eyeball it. So there's the middle. And the reason we mark the middle is so we measure out this way and that way our last baluster will be the equal distance from each end on each side and everything will look symmetric and balanced. Okay, so now that we got our center point, we need to mark these four and a half inches each. And since the balusters are half inch uh, wide, that'll leave about a four inch gap, which is uh, the maximum gap you can have for most local ordinances and, and guidelines. <clears throat> so anyway, so we'll go one, two, three, four and a half, and we'll just continue all the way down. And then do the same on the other side. Okay, so with that done, grab your uh, square or speed square, whichever you got. I've got a little one here that I'm going to use to mark the center in just a minute. So one thing to note here, again, we talked earlier about uh, this piece that we picked out to be on the bottom rail. So I'm going to mark on this top piece, which will become the underside of the top rail. It's okay to mark the whole length, but on this one, I don't want that pencil mark showing and I don't want to have to come back and sand it. So on that, um, I just mark it in the middle and that'll get covered up by the baluster connector. So just uh, go through down, down through here and you can mark these all at the same time. Again, make sure your ends are flush before you start. Something I noticed on this one, the, the last uh, piece here is right at half an inch from the end. So uh, when I measure these things, they're, they're already slightly um, less than four and a half inches. Uh, when you space these at four and a half, the gap is a little bit less than four inches. So I'm just going to leave this and because uh, I don't know how I would even connect it there right on the end anyway. It would stick over. All right, so now I've got all my spacing marks and I went ahead on this rail, marked the top one and which side was the pretty side. And now I'm gonna go back and mark the center of each one to get my exact placement for my baluster connector. All right, so now we need to find the uh, center of our mark, center of each board. And so basically I just set my square at three inches um, and these are inch and a half wide, so I just go in uh, about three, three quarters of an inch and mark that, mark that spot, and that's the, uh, get the angle right here. Um, there you go. It's hard to tell with this iPhone, but that is uh, three quarters of an inch. Uh, basically on each side. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Just the main thing is do it consistently on uh, all your boards. Uh, so we'll go down uh, this board measuring from this side and then we'll come back the other way on the next board measuring uh, from the other side like this. And that way we're measuring, you know, from the, from the front side on, on both of them. All right, so now we're uh, ready to go. Um, I've got a little cross mark at each section. So before we go any further, take a quick check. I've already done this. Just go back and make sure uh, each one is four and a half inches. Uh, on a couple, one of these I got messed up and didn't count right and got almost done and realized that I had one that was not four and a half. It was like three and a half and I had to re restart over. So go ahead and double check your measurements. You'll measure twice and Screw your baluster connectors in once. All right, next we wanna get our uh, baluster connector kit and uh, go through and get out the, uh, the ones for the straight railing. Uh, so basically you've got 
these that are for the stairs, we'll just set those aside and uh, pull out the, the flat ones. So for ours, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 balusters, so we'll need 26 uh, connectors. So basically pull those out and to get them ready to go, just take your screw. Uh, this flat part will rest on the against the two by four. So you wanna put the screw into the other end and go ahead and get them all started and ready to go. Um, and then I'll show you the next trick. Okay, the next trick I found that'll save you a lot of frustration is one, put all your, um, put all these things that you've prepared in a little container so they don't bounce all over the place. That wasn't the tip, but that is another one. Um, so when you're putting these in, when, with the drill, it can be hard to kind of get them started and they wobble and it, it's really frustrating. But what I found is if you just line this up and go ahead and get your screw started, it'll go a lot faster. So I'm gonna go ahead and hammer these in. You don't have to worry about scuffing up these screw heads because you won't see them. They'll be covered up by the baluster. All right, so then all that's left is to screw them in. If you've got a clutch, uh, set it so you don't overdrive these and uh, really just kind of be careful because these things are really brittle. They'll break quite easily. Um, I used my clutch and it worked fine most of the time, but sometimes you'll hit a soft spot in the wood and then these things just give out. So I wouldn't necessarily depend on the clutch. But this takes a little bit of work, but basically you just want to get it, keep it as straight as possible and just get it down to where it's snug. It doesn't have to be tight. And as you can see, getting those started with a hammer, uh, that was probably three or four times faster than what I was doing before, trying to get them started manually. This goes so much faster. All right, and then we'll just do the same thing on the other side. So, if you like this video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, click the notification bell so you get notified when a new, uh, new uh, video comes out. All right, we've got all our baluster connectors uh, connected, so now it's time to add the balusters. So, as we move to the next step, make sure you keep this... Uh, pair together and don't lose track of which side is which uh, so we end up again with the pretty sides where we intended them to be so i'm just gonna unhook these from my vise and we'll just carry them over here I'm, so really the next step you need to find a level floor uh, as it works out the best so i'm going to move these into my garage all right so i've got these uh laid out in the garage now so the first step is I'm gonna put these balusters in and really now we're just gonna put them in we don't have to get them all the way bottomed out just put them in enough right now to, so they stand up and then uh, we'll take our block and hammer that we showed you earlier and we'll just take that lay it on top and just tap it in the rest of the way. You don't have to hit it real hard, just kind of gently tap it until it uh, bottoms out on the connector at the bottom. All right, so basically just take my block, give it a couple taps, and then I'll show you. I don't know if you can tell there, but this one's tapped in. And that one's not. I think it's hard to tell. But anyway, just want to get those tapped down all the way. Next step is again keep these 
aligned the way we had them before. So here's our side I picked to be the pretty side. And then this over here is the pretty side. So they're both, both facing up now. All right, and you want to take your 3 8 inch spacer and set them up under here. Basically, that's the distance from the floor uh, to, to the connector. And this will help keep them at the right level so you got one, at least one dimension uh, lined up properly. All right, so at this point, this is kind of the most tedious thing. But if you'll follow these instructions and just take your time and be patient, it should go in no problem. So basically, we want to line up the first one and then get these uh, kind of lined up down about, you want to stay about four ahead. So here's an example of the screw is kind of keeping this one from going in. So you want to keep uh, far, you know, about, about like that. So one, two, three, four six or seven ahead on the screw. And then you can start tapping in this end. And then just kind of keep these lined up as you go. And then you can slide your spacer down to the next section. One of mine is not exactly three eighths, so and you can see here I got a little ahead of myself. So I gotta tap this back down a little bit to get this one lined up again. So now we've got those tapped in place. We just need to stand it up and I'm gonna uh, tap in this side, make sure all of these are uh, in all the way. This may come apart if uh, it holds pretty tight, but as long as you don't jerk around a whole lot, um, you can stand it up and it'll stay together. So basically I'm just gonna tap, tap these in. Okay, now it's time to uh, put our railing connector kit on. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure my rail is in uh, the proper orientation. So uh, this is the top rail. So I've got this one standing up correctly. Uh, basically in your kit, you got uh, two connectors. And then six screws per connector so a total of uh, 12 All right, we use uh, the two on each one in the middle first and then once we go to install it in the deck we'll use the other four uh, total of eight all right so basically these just uh, sit in like this And depending on your two by four, it'll be, uh, should be you know, pretty snug fit. And just make sure it's pushed all the way up. And, uh, and again, oriented the proper way. So this will be screwed to the post. So you want the gravity working for you. So the rail sits down against the, uh, the bottom of this little connector. And then you just want to take your screwdriver or your hammer and uh, start these screws again. star bit drill drive them in again don't over tighten them you'll crack your uh, connector all 
Now for the bottom ones, you don't want to put them in and with your rail sitting like this because again, you'll have the weight of the rail on it and you risk cracking it. So what I do is carefully, again, keep a little pressure so these don't pop out. Just flip it over. Now we're upside down, so we need to put our connectors on upside down as well. Same thing. And just like that, you've got <coughs> finished railing. And that'll look uh, really nice. So the only only step that's left now is to uh, put it between your two posts. Um, again, we're upside down now. So flip it over, but once you get it lined up in your post, you've got one, two, one, two, three, four screws to put that into your posts. So that'll be eight, eight screws per side and that, that rail's not going anywhere. So anyway, hope you've liked this video and uh, check out some of my other home improvement videos. I cover a wide spectrum of appliance repair and uh, toilet and plumbing. Um, and I've got a couple woodworking videos and just a little hodgepodge of uh, things you can do around the house uh, for yourself and save a little money. Again, uh, subscribe and Hit that notification bell and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video.